always had an inch left. I always had some fucking wiggle room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every time I would fuck up, there was always some wiggle. There was always a Brad Pitt on the phone. Straight up. There was always some, like, you know, Sundance award. Some next project. There was always Alma. There was always another. There was always wiggle room to get back into ego. Mm -hmm. And this time, there wasn't no wiggle room. That's why I attribute this woman with saving my life. Because she destroyed any route towards that wiggle. That's real. It is real. Rock fucking bottom. Rock bottom. Bottom isn't when you experience the worst moment of your life. Definitely bottom not. is when you change. That's right. It's when you actually, t- it's when, when you touch it, when you smell it, when it's right on your face yeah. and you feel it. And it does, it's not about severity of what the thing nah, is. It's about, nah. it's it's about, about, about what you do with it once it, it happens. Yeah, so yeah. like, once, once, once it happened, I mean, I, when it landed, I forgot how to breathe. You know, because the email, the subtext of the email was, your hustle's over. You know? Uh... And I forgot how to breathe. And I, the next thing I did after two minutes of sitting there, looking at, staring at a computer screen, was I went and loaded up a gun and sat at my table and was gonna kill myself. I was out of here. I didn't know what to do anymore. Like all my ideas had failed. And I sat there for two minutes thinking, where's the wiggle room? I'd already used what's every- What's my play? Yeah, what's the play? Uh, and there were no options. It was like, there was nowhere to go. It's not like I could go outside and get a Choco Taco and chill on the, you know, uh, people driving down the street, rolling down the window, like fuck off and die. You know, this is where I was in the early days of this shit. So I didn't even want to leave my house. And I had a woman living in my house who wasn't my wife. And I was on my way to go do some movie I didn't give a fuck about, you know, just like momentum building kind of shit, you know, movies, no intrinsic value, just like I need something on the cards, you know, for this year, I need my two or three projects, one of these things. And, um, and I felt disconnected from all of it. And I wound up getting emails from certain dudes who, who like you, were still involved in my life, even when it got ugly, you know, when it got chunky. One of those dudes was Sean Penn. And Sean's like, you need to call Brolin. And I called Brolin, and he told me he was going to this meeting online. Now, the gun is loaded. Like, I haven't left my sitting position, you know. And I wound up signing on to this meeting, and I heard one of the dudes who was speaking that night say, uh... If you're new and you just entered, you know, you don't have everything you want right now, but you got everything you need right now. Wow. Now. Wow. Now. 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 And he did that for like two minutes. And the first minute I'm thinking, you can't spend the whole rest of your share just snapping your fingers and saying now. Like, this shit is ludicrous. And I went into this judgment, which is what my alcoholism sounds like. It sounds like criticality. It sounds like judgment. And so I'm, I'm in my judgment, like... You better say, and the gun is right here. I'm like, you better say something that's really going to get me the fuck out of where I'm at. And after two minutes, like, I, I felt like a giggle start to rise inside of me, and I felt something like presence. I stopped thinking about the email, stopped thinking about my hustle. The gun almost disappeared, and it was like I'm sitting here on this, this, this Skype call, and I'm present for the first time in my life. And I want to write in a dude in the chat box, like, hey, bro, you know, I, I, I'm on the verge. You know, I, I'm about to kill myself. He's like, oh, okay, cool. Call me tomorrow. Just like throw away, you know, and I needed that. I had been enabled for so long in my life that if it was going to be me walking into this program and having a bunch of dudes pat me on the back like, hey, man, welcome home. We're glad you're here. I'd have been out again because then it would have been more wiggle room. But the guy that I wound up running into was not having it. And he said, hey, man, uh, meet me on the beach tomorrow. And I wound up uh, up here at Tower 10. And he he said, uh. I need you to get on your knees. And I'm like, I'm not getting on my knees. He's like, cool, deuces. He started walking away. I'm thinking, oh, fuck. But it also reified this, like, you don't care. Like, you care, but not in that way. You know, you're not going to pat me on my back. And I said, okay, okay. I was, I was so willing at this point because I was in so much fucking pain. And he said, get on your knees. And I get on my knees. He gets on his knees with me. So right away, it's no longer like this power play. We're like, like collaborating in this. And he says, I need you to stop the waves. And I'm like... Man, listen, this Dr. Quinn medicine woman version of this shit ain't going to work with me. You know, like, I, I get how this goes. He's like, are you either going to write what happens or you're going to do a bunch of shit that you don't believe in so that your life changes? Because your issue is that you, you need to rationalize everything and you're out of options, son. Like, what? if not this, what? And he was right. And so I started saying, you know, stop waves. And he's like, louder, man. Stop waves. And he got up off of his knees and he started walking away. And I looked back and he's like, nah, keep going. And he, he's like, keep saying it again. I say, stop waves. He's like, louder, bro. They're all the way over there. You're all the way over here. Stop them waves, man. And now I'm yelling. And I'm having like an emotional 
it almost feels performative now. Yeah, now yeah. I'm like back in my bag, yeah, back yeah. to like the manipulating, hustling, yeah. like wiggle room watch finding. This. Yeah, watch yeah. this. Boom. Let me, let me. And then I'm crying and I'm stop waves. You know, right, like right, right. Uh, I'm in the middle of like right. the, the greatest monologue right, of my right, life right, on right, this right, beach. Right. You know? Stanley Kowalski. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, and uh, he puts his hand on my shoulder and he goes, "You can stop all that," which made me like giggle. You know, <laughs> I started giggling. And then he stood up and he put his hand on my left shoulder and put his hand on my right shoulder. And he said, welcome to AA. And uh, it did something to me that felt like, like, it felt like warrior shit. You know, I didn't, it felt like, like, like man code, like G shit. It didn't feel like fluffy, cute shit, book reading, sitting in a, it felt like. You're on a mission. Yeah. It felt, it felt purposeful mm -hmm. and it felt sexy, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Sexy in the way that listening to Kevin Vance feels sexy mm -hmm. to a young man mm -hmm. who feels like a boy. Mm -hmm. It felt so rooted mm -hmm. and it wasn't emotional. It wasn't performative. Mm -hmm. He wasn't trying to manipulate me, but it was kind of hokey and like the knights, which knights in shining armor kind of hokiness that like made me feel like a little kid again. And he said, I need you to go home and clear out, like clear the decks. And I'm like, nah, man, like for me, and I don't know if you felt this way, but every woman was the one for me. There was never a two. If you liked me, you were the one. Yeah. Uh, and that had to do with my insecurity and my fear. Like I didn't have no, there was no two or three or I was just dating like, like frivolously. It was always like this grand hair climbing up the super emotional, super uh, romantic, super uh, this fierce romance, you know, that I was searching for, desperate little boy shit. And he said, you gotta clear the decks. And I'm like, I don't know if I can do that, man. You know, I, I, uh, I feel like she's the one. And he's like giggling to himself, you know? <laughs> this isn't my wife. My wife is not involved in my life at this point. Oh, yeah. And I got this one who's not the one who accused me of this shit. And she's just another person who's, who's been uh, trapped in my sphere of, uh, of influence. And she's living in my house. And he's like, uh, well, look, man, I'll tell you what, you know, you can keep doing it your way or you can try some new shit because the way that you're living, it's fucked. You're fucked. You're fully fucked. You're doomed is what he said. Doomed. You're doomed. That was the word. And um, I flipped to this page. He, he made me flip to this doctor's opinion we got in our book. And in the doctor's opinion or how our book starts, it, it mentions the word doomed. And he's like, this isn't like another AA guy. This is a doctor telling you you're doomed if you don't figure this shit out. And uh, he goes... To put it in perspective, if you went to Kaiser Permanente right now and they had sat you down and put your, you know, x-rayed you and put your, your x-ray up on a light board and you're looking at a picture of your clavicle and the doctor said, hey, man, you see that, that gray spot just above your chest cavity? You're doomed. What would happen to you is your asshole would suck. You would fucking start sweating bullets and you wouldn't be thinking about the job that you got to get to or the girl you got to hold on to or where you're going to go on the for Father's Day or what that you immediately your whole life would get very small and the only rational response to that kind of information is well what do I do and if I told you to staple a dog's dick to your fucking chin and walk up and down the street picking a cigarette buzz you would do it you wouldn't ask me why or whether you believe in it or nothing you go look for a dog you know <laughs> and so uh that made sense to me he puts me in a car he says I need you to listen to Sandy Beach tape now at this point in my life like I'm 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 like barely hanging on and I'm, I'm using this woman like drugs, you know? Every time I need validation, I'm having like, I'm with this woman yeah. and, and she becomes with the job, the mask of success that the job created for me, which kept me from like really looking at myself. She became that for me in the interim. And he's like, you gotta get rid of all of it, you know? There is no more work and no more romance for, for a year. You're gonna have to give me a year. And I'm thinking like, I'm not gonna be able to pull that off, you know? And right away I'm half measuring and this is my wiggle room, I, I can't. And uh, he says, I need you to download this tape, this Sandy Beach tape. Sandy Beach is a, a, a big speaker. Uh, uh, and in, in, this, in this... What was in, the speech? Yeah, the speech was he was talking about this, this Chinese farmer. And uh, this Chinese farmer and his son, they're picking radishes about the ground. And they don't own the land that they're farming off of. And uh, they're barely subsisting. They're giving 70% to the landowner. They're living off of 30% of these radishes. Their whole financial legacy is tied up into this workhorse. And one day, and the son is really working the land because the man is too old. And one day the workhorse runs up off the hill. He, he just fucks off. He's up the hill. And the son runs into the house and he shakes his dad up and he says, Dad, you're not going to believe this is a, this is a travesty. We're going to die out here. Uh, I can't get these radishes to grow unless I turn this land over and I can't move that hoe without the horse and the horse is gone. This is a nightmare. And 
the old man, nonplus, looks at his son. He goes, I don't know what this is, son. I don't know if it is a nightmare. I can't call it. And the son thinks his dad's out to lunch yeah. or like ambivalent or something's wrong or he's too old. And a couple days later, the kid is chilling on the porch and he sees the horse running down the hill with 50 wild stallions behind it. And they run into the paddock and he locks the paddock and he runs inside and he hits the dad. He's like, man, this is fuck radishes like we're rich you know we're, we're in the horse business we're in the horse trading business now this is a miracle dad i'm gonna go tell everybody we're trading horses now and the father looks at his son nonplussed again and says i don't know what this is i don't know if it's a miracle i can't call it and a couple more days pass and the son's trying to break these horses down domesticate these horses he doesn't know anything about horses he's a radish farmer so uh, one of the horses ain't having it and he rears up kicks him in his leg it's like 1400s china there's no kaiser permanente his shit is shattered yeah. They wrap him in some like tobacco leaves and some sprinkle some mint on it. Go sit in a chair for a while, and uh, and he's wailing. And the townspeople hear about it. And the townspeople run up on the little shack and oh man, what are you gonna do? You know you can't domesticate these horses. You can't move this hoe. You guys are fully fucked. I don't know what you're gonna do, but this is this is pretty much the end, right? Like this is a nightmare. And the old man says, I don't know what this is. He looks at his son's leg. He goes, I don't know what this is. I can't I can't really call it. Uh, a couple more days pass, he's sitting with his son, he's trying to calm him down, he's in the middle of pain, and they hear this thunderous noise, and they look up on the ridge line, and they see 5,000 samurai on horseback running towards their little hut. And the commanding officer gets off his horse and says, give us your son, we're going to fight the Maoist army. And he looks at his son's leg, and he looks back at the samurai army, and he goes, I, I would, but he can't get out the chair. You know, he, he, he can't get on his, he, he can't. No, I can't. I would, but I can't, he's crippled. And the man gets back on his horse and 8,000 men ride off to their death. And I listen to this tape and, and I, I, I'm driving back from the beach back to where I'm living and I get out of my car and her bags are packed. Mm. She's on her way out. Mm. And old me would have written a haiku poem in blood and ripped my shirt off Hulk Hogan style and ran down the street and jumped over the fence and that, that guy, the yes. climb the hair up the boom thing. Boombox in yeah, the air. Yeah, boombox in the air, guys. That's what I came up on. And something in me from having heard what I just heard, what feels like this is, this is now I can't get no lower. I hear this like I can't call it. And this, it becomes like this, the most diplomatic breakup I ever had in my life. And I say, what can I do? And, she, and uh, can I get you a car? And she goes, no, don't worry about it. Go get well. And I go walk into my house and I call my dude up and I'm like, man, I think this shit is working. Like, Man, this is a miracle. Like, this is the most diplomatic thing I ever, and I'm in my meeting, I'm telling all the dudes, like, I think this program's really working in my life, man. And then I got five days sober, and they're like, bro, I think you're pink cloud, and why don't you go to another fucking meeting, Jack? And, uh, and I go on to this other meeting. Now, the whole time I've been doing this for the first five days, I'm on the phone with a lawyer. Like, look, this is true, but this isn't true. And I got receipts for this, and I'm not going to do this. And bop, I'm fighting, fighting, fighting tooth and nail. I'm on the phone with the agents, and the manager's like, listen, you got to believe me, and blah, 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 and doing that shit, right? And uh, my sponsor's telling me the whole time, he's like, look, you're going to have to let go, dog. Like, the wind's at your back. Just let go. You know, all this, like, fighting you fuck around, like, let go, man. That's childish. And, and I'm hearing him, but I'm not doing it. You know, I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone with him, and I'm hanging up the phone, and I'm fighting this thing. And I got a lawyer who's like, you need to go to rehab for anger management. Because when you go to court, no, spawn, no AA is going to mean shit, you know. Addicts had already juiced that route for so long that it don't mean nothing. We need clinical receipts that you're doing something, right? And I'm like, I'm not going to rehab. That's like, that's, I've always really like cultivated my brown bagger, right? Like I don't like wearing new shoes. So this idea that I was going to pay all this money to go pet a horse and make a friendship bracelet, it felt like, man, this shit's like, that's not sexy. Mm -hmm. You know, I found AA for real. I'm really in my shit now. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to go to this rehab. And Especially fighting, you don't want to go to it because somebody's saying that's going to get you off. Look, It's all about the intentionality. You, you got to not stop. It's not about not saying the right thing because you're worried about getting in trouble. You say the right thing because you believe the fucking right thing. It's that and it's also I'd already done this. Right. I'd already gone to rehab, wrote a script and played that game. Right, right, you know? right, right, and right, it, right, and, uh, right. And to focus. And, and, not the, and it didn't work. Man. It didn't work. It didn't work. To focus on like my childhood trauma right. isn't where my problem lies. My problem doesn't lie in what people did to me. What led you to a place with more wiggle room and now you don't have it? And so, and, and so, and, and I'm, I'm telling them, no, nah, I don't want to do this, you know, and I'm telling the lawyer, like, I don't want to do this. And look, yeah, this and this, and I'm fighting all this shit. And I sign on to this AA meeting. This is where I'm talking about, like, miraculous shit started to pop off in my life. And my, my dude sent me there because his mom was taking a chip for, like, 37 years. Mm -hmm. And the woman who took a chip right after his mother 
was the woman I lost my virginity to, who when I was 19 years old, I held a knife to her neck. And everything in that moment, it felt like I heard God's voice say, I'm everywhere. You can't run no more. And like my whole fucking, all my planning and like all this like, da, 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 just went gone. And um, that really happened, you know? And I remember it vividly. And I wrote her in the chat box, like, did my dude tell you to come? Like, do you know this guy and this guy? She's like, nah, I'm in here because my people are getting chips, you know? But it's good to see you. I knew you were on your way here. You know, I, I hope you get it this time. And um, so I call my dude up and he's like, bro, you got to let go. You got to let go in full. And I wind up getting in my car and I drive up to Utah. And I'm in Utah for three months. And while I'm in Utah, it allows me, it gives me, they take my cell phone from me. And if they didn't take my cell phone from me, I was never going to be able to deal with what I needed to deal with. I had never known how to pray because I could never cultivate silence. I had no absence in my life. Every unforgiving minute was full of some fucking scroll or some more like ego feed, mm -hmm. constant, nonstop mm -hmm. rotation of this, this ego thing and that ego thing and ba 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 ba, just constant fulfillment of like my own personal desires. And they took my phone from me. And just for that reason alone, I would, I would urge anybody to go this route if you're in a situation like yeah. mine just to get the fucking phone out of your pocket mm -hmm. and what that gave me was time to like really assess what had been my operating systems what had been like the motivational force in my life which was always me it was always ego it was the, always even the smallest decision the smallest decision to even go into everything, food to everything, everything you eat everything, everything, everything yeah, was yeah, ego yeah. everything was ego I, I would eat that not because it tasted good but because it would do this or do that you know and um so I was there for, for, for 90 days, and in that 90 days, I, I, uh, I made a list of all these people that I had hurt. And, and um, I mean, a bunch of shit happened, but uh, I came out and um, just hit the ground running, trying to make amends, trying to right these wrongs. And this is also still a part of that. There's some people who don't want to talk to me, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I understand that. And so my purpose now is to be patient. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's John, Bam Bam the Dog. Uh, first, on behalf of both of us and everybody from the Real Ones team, I just wanna sincerely thank you guys for, for, for tuning in. The folks that I bring on the show, they're family to me, and uh, being able to tell their stories and bringing you into their world is something that I'm, I'm just super proud of and uh, again, grateful that you guys tune in. We've decided we wanna take things just a step further. We're gonna introduce a Patreon community. And basically what that means is if you become a part of this community, look, I already bored Bam Bam. If you want to become a part of this community, you're going to be able to hear episodes early and all that, ad-free and all that good stuff. But there's all this behind-the-scenes footage, all this stuff that we've shot um, that really brings you into the folks that we've had on the show, really brings you into their world. You're going to be able to do live chats with me and the folks that I bring on the show to talk about their world, talk about the issues that they're dealing with, about their triumphs and their tragedies. Just go to Patreon slash Real Ones on this website that you see right there right on the screen that's right in front of you. This whole idea was um, something about building bridges and, 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 and bringing people together and um, bringing folks that often don't get the mic and, and giving the mic to them. So the fact that you guys tune in means the world. Anyways, again, thank you. Uh, be good to each other out there. Rock and roll.